Greetings everybody and welcome to the Calvinism channel. My name is Matthew Chihadi and in this video we're going to examine a very interesting topic uh, which is actually uh, pertinent to the Calvinism uh, predestination free will uh, debate and that is what is Manichaeism? And of course why is this question even important? Why should we uh, be concerned about uh, our religion called Manichaeism? The thing is that Manichaeism is a 3rd century syncretistic religion that arose in modern in Persia by the teachings of Mani, which, who was a wandering uh, philosopher and religious teacher. According to Armenian detractors of Calvin Calvinism, this religion taught determinism, election, and total depravity. And furthermore, Armenians claim that Augustine drew many of his, his teachings from Manichaeism that later on became the foundation for Calvinism, as he was a former member of this sect. So Arminians are saying that, look at these parallels, these these uh, similarities between this uh, this heretical religion, Manichaeism, and Calvinism, and so they're trying to say that we must reject Calvinism because of these alleged roots in Manichaeism, uh, Manichaeism. and so that's why we're going to take a look at this religion and see what it really says and how it matches up with Calvinism. Now, first of all, we have to realize that correlation does not mean causation. This is a logical fallacy. Uh, it's also akin to what is known as the bogeyman fallacy, that we try to uh, compare a given religion with uh, another religion which we know is false. Um, and so, therefore, we can say that, oh, you, you resemble this other religion, and so, therefore, you must be false because uh, two, uh, two birds of a feather, uh, you flock together. But just because a particular faith may share some teachings with uh, a known heretical faith does not necessarily mean that that given faith is all bad. And of course, we have to examine what Manichaeism really teaches and whether it is the same as what Calvinism itself teaches. For example, Islam also believes in God, but this does not mean that all people who believe in God are thus necessarily, by, by necessary consequence, Muslims. The logic does not hold. Correlation does not mean causation. And incidentally, Muslims may have taken their views on fatalism from Christian predestination, albeit in a, in a distorted way over centuries of time. Remember that Muhammad uh, came in the 7th century, uh, and uh, he, he uh, read and he listened to Christian and Jewish uh, teachers, and he took their teachings, although uh, uh, he did distort many of these teachings, when he formulated his uh, his doctrine and his teachings in Islam. So now let's go back to Augustine again. Augustine was a former Manichae, and he, but he repudiated, he repudiated the sect's teaching after a poor showing by a Manichaean teacher by the name of Francis of Mileve upon interrogation by Augustine. Augustine also later uh, refuted and attacked uh, Faustus and the Manichaeism teachings in uh, in one, not just one, but also several of his books. Let's also take a look at what Augustine says about this whole trial, uh, about uh, how how he uh, uh, how he repudiated Manichaeism in his Confessions. He writes, "Lord my God, Judge of my conscience, is my memory correct? Before you, I lay my heart and memory. At that time, you were dealing with me in your hidden secret providence, and you were putting my shameful errors." In my face, so that I would see and hate them. So can you see that uh, here Augustine is actually refuting um, and arguing against Manichaeism through sort of a Calvinistic uh, argument of predestination. Uh, he's, he's saying that at that time when he was mired in error, God was dealing with, uh, with him in a secret uh, hidden providence, that by God's providence, uh, God's electing providence, he was dealing with uh, or with Augustine and bringing him out of his era of Manichaeism. I just found this very interesting that that Augustine is using the teaching of predestination to refute or to to speak against Manichaeism. So, does Calvinism have any kind of Manichaean roots? Is it related in any which way to Manichaeism? Uh, no. Although we uphold Augustine for his many good teachings, for example, Calvinists and and Arminians. Uh, they, the reason we believe in the Trinity uh, uh, is because um, Augustine is, beca is beca because of Augustine's rule 
in formulating uh, the doctrine of the Trinity. Augustine played a very significant role in formulating our, uh, our, our understanding of the Trinity that we hold uh, until today. And also Calvinists do not just simply translate everything verbatim uh, Augustine, that, uh, Augustine ever said. For example, many reformers, uh, and also um, not just during the Reformation, but also later on, they did not agree with Augustine's view on justification and sanctification. We believe that Augustine sort of mixed justification and sanctification together, whereas according to the Ordo Salutis, we, uh, we, we make a distinction between justification and sanctification as two separate stages in the order of salvation. Furthermore, Augustine held to a form of sacerdotalism, that God, uh, uh, God gives his grace through the operation of the priesthood, and this the reformers rejected. The Reformation arrived over a thousand years after Augustine, and currents of ideas can easily change during such a time span. So if we go from Augustine to uh, Anz uh, Anselm or Ambrose, or a gut shock of Orbe in the 9th century, and then onward to uh, the reformers in the Reformation and to modern times, uh, uh, th uh, people think differently, and the ideas come and go. Um, uh, just because Augustine was a former Manichae at some time does not necessarily mean that therefore all Calvinists are, are Manichaeism. This is just an absurd uh, idea. Election, the teaching of election and predestination, ultimately has its basis in the Old Testament concept of God choosing a people for himself, that is, the Jewish nation, predating Augustine, Manny, Calvin, and Arminius. But so now let's take a look at what does Manichaeism actually teach. In the Manichaean system, there are five castes. There are doctors, ministers, administrators, monks, and also hearers, uh, also called auditors, who are very much like lay people. The first four are the elect. In the Manichaean system, these are the elect people, uh, not, a, uh, uh, not a group of people who are elect unto salvation, in total contradis contradistinction with, with Calvinist predestination. A hearer, and even those outside the sect, can also become uh, elect after a series of soul transmigrations in total contrast with the teaching of predest predestination, which uh, Augustine and Calvinists and Reformers uh, also today, uh, we draw our teaching of predest predestination from the Bible. So what does Manichaeism teach on free will? Toward you, uh, a scholar of Manichaeism, you can see his book in the upper right corner, uh, he states that Manny himself did not deny free will. Interestingly, also Augustine upheld free will, a form of free will. In paragraph 100 of the Enchiridion, uh, Augustine writes, he used the very will of the creature, which was working in opposition to the creator's will as an instrument for carrying out his will, the supremely good, thus turning to good account even what is evil. So even uh, Augustine did not believe in total, utter, absolute uh, 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 that humans we have no free will, rather our human free will goes together with God's election. Uh, Manichaeism was also a dualistic religion, that is a great hallmark of the Manichaean system. Uh, Manichaeism's uh, hallmark characteristic is a belief in dualism, the struggle between a good God and an evil one. Mani said that uh, the good God was the father of greatness, and the evil God was the king of darkness. And so you can see how some people would transplant this, uh, the father of greatness would be the Christian God and the king of, king of darkness would be Satan, the, uh, the, um, the, uh, that would be Satan, the devil. Manichaeism is a form of absolute dualism where both gods have the same power and strength, sort of like the yin and the yang. They also hold that matter in the human body is evil, whereas the soul originates from the realm of light and goodness. This ideology influenced other agnostic sects to claim that human souls were entrapped inside their coronal prison, prisons, much like Platonism, uh, which is uh, a similar, uh, similar uh, agnostic critical um, uh, system. But very interestingly, uh, we can see that uh, this dualism, the idea of a good God and the, and the bad God, 
uh, actually crop up in in modern evangelical uh, theology, uh, although not in Calvinism. Uh, some uh, some Christians of the Armenian stripe, for example, they make these uh, Facebook postings where uh, it's as if those Satanists saying, "If I win, Clinton wins." Jesus says, "Not if I can help it." And of course, press like to help Jesus win. There's a form of like um, like um, 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 working together with Jesus, trying to help him out in his victory, and so it's it suggests that that Jesus and Satan are of the same power, of the same strength, and that they're in this cosmic battle one against the other. Totally in contrast with the teaching of the Bible, where God is ultimately sovereign; He's a, He has absolute power, and He can crush Satan in an instant. Or other Armenians say that, uh, as someone has said. God always votes for us, and Satan always votes against us. And then we are asked to vote to break the tie. It is how we vote that gives our lives their significance. Interestingly, not uh, God's uh, not God's goodness, not God's uh, uh, predestination, not his par- power, not his sovereignty, not his love, but our choice is what gives our own lives our own significance. And again, the idea that God has one vote, Satan has an has a vote of equal uh, equal strength and power and worth, but we humans, we have to decide this tie, this struggle between God and Satan. But it goes even further. Uh, can we say that there's a, an Arminian type of Manichism? Uh, I'm citing Roger Olson, the great Arminian theologian. He calls himself an Arminian. He cites Jack Luttrell in his book Against Calvinism on page 132. Paulson writes, God limits himself not only by creating a world as such, but also and even further by the kind of world he chose to create. That is, he chose to make a world that is relatively independent of him. This means that God has created human beings as persons with an innate power to initiate actions. That is, man is free to act without his acts being predetermined by God without the simultaneous and efficacious co-actions of God. Ordinarily, man is allowed to exercise his power of free choice without interference, coercion, or for ordination. By not intervening in their decisions unless his special purposes require it, God respects both the integrity of his own sovereign choice to make free creatures in the first place. I, th- I think this is rather uh, amazing and a sad characterization uh, of what God is like. And it stands in total contrast to uh, Ephesians chapter 1 verse 11, which says, In him also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will. This Arminian ideology comes from another quarter outside of the Bible. And so let's take a look at what, what does this mean, this Arminian uh, thought, what does it mean for good and evil? If men can initiate their own actions according to their free will, then so can Satan. Does God cause bad things to happen? Um, If not, then this means that Satan is not under God's control. Being a stronger power than man, it means that that Satan can also initiate his own actions. And he can cause as much mayhem as he wants. And it's hard to see if God can actually stop him. What a horrible thought. So in summary and conclusion, Manichaeism has only a superficial resemblance to Calvinism, only in terminology and greatly distorted preceding Christian doctrine. While Augustine was a Manichae himself, he later rejected it and polemicized against it, also using uh, Calvinist-like arguments. Calvinist predestination's foundation lies ultimately in the Bible and Old Testament of God choosing for himself a people. Manichaeism is a dualistic religion, with a good God and a bad God. Arminianism also has dualistic-like tendencies, like Manichaeism. In Arminianism, God is a weak God, whereas in Calvinism, God is absolute, sovereign, and all-powerful. And I ask you, dear listener, which is a better religion?